Hello, and welcome back to my Transamerica Trail Adventure Across America series. In part five, I spent a few days at my friend's house, relaxing and working on my bike. Once I got everything squared away, I hopped back on the road. I decided to skip the Idaho section of the Tat due to the blistering heat and smoke, and instead head northeast to check out Yellowstone National Park. After seeing everything I could in just two short days, I packed up to reconnect with the Tat in Wyoming. I awoke on day 16 of my trip, the most sore I'd been in years. Apparently, the hike I did the day before royally kicked my butt, and sleeping on the ground did not help out any. My friendly neighbors invited me over for the best breakfast I had during my entire trip, though I failed to get any pictures or videos of this event. Thank you again, Rasco family. Unfortunately, my stay in Yellowstone came to an end, and I was forced to hop back on the road heading south though I still got to see some amazing sights along the way. My plan was to intercept the Tat in the mountain range lining the western border of Wyoming. The drive through Wyoming was absolutely breathtaking. Everyone always asked me along the way if I got to see the Tetons. I honestly didn't even know what they were until they began to appear on the horizon. Seeing this mountain range made me decide right then and there that I would have to return to Wyoming for a longer stay as there was just so much to do and see. It was like the Wild West out here. The sky seemed so much bigger and the landscape made me feel even smaller. The towns were far and few in between and the rules and laws seemed all but non-existent. I followed the Snake River for a good distance until I finally made it to a campsite within a few miles of the Tad. I set up shop and met my neighbors Zach and Kinsey. They generously invited me over to join their dinner and family reunion. It was definitely another highlight of my trip. It's always great to make new friends in a foreign area, as traveling solo can get lonely at times. The next day I saddled up and made the short drive to the Tat, but not before getting one last look at the ginormous Snake River. This section of the Tat was breathtaking. I was much happier being at higher altitude where it was nice and cool with lots of trees for breaks in the shade. Life was abundant in these parts of Wyoming. The birds singing and the beautiful sky made me fall in love with this land. Even the farms in Wyoming look like something out of a Disney movie. I was making terrible time because I kept having to stop and pull out the camera or drone to capture all these amazing sights, but I feel like it was worth it in the end. I rode for hours with a smile on my face, but the desert always finds a way to sneak up on me. The large meadows continued to grow in size until all the trees disappeared and the dirt and brush once again took over. I was back in the desert. And this time, it was even more desolate than I could have ever imagined. I was living in constant fear of getting a flat tire or my motorcycle breaking down. But nature had a pretty cool way of taking my mind off of things. It turned out that life actually flourished in these parts. I got to see, for the first time in my life, wild horses. For many of you, this probably wouldn't be as exciting, but growing up in a city, this was something that I never got to experience. After a long day of riding, I made my way to a nearby reservoir to set up camp. I was happy to be back on the trail after taking a well-deserved break. I enjoyed the magnificent sunset and hopped in my tent to call it a night. I awoke on what would be day 18 of my trip. I slept good and got a decently early start. I packed up my belongings and said goodbye to my home by the reservoir. The heat quickly made itself known once again, and the only salvation was the occasional rain cloud passing through. The landscape more than made up for the hot temperature, and I would often pull off just to get some shots of these magnificent views. It would be really easy to get yourself into a lot of trouble out here, which is why I decided not to venture too far off the trail. I rode all day until the scenery began to change from towering canyons to a somewhat green landscape as I neared the border of Colorado. I rode until I found a state park on a reservoir and set up camp. It was still in the upper 90s, so I decided to make the hike down to the lake to cool off. It's safe to say I was a little disappointed given how much money the state park was charging for just one night, especially given that their showers had no hot water and the sites were just a patch of gravel with a concrete table and shade, but I tried to make the best of it. Thank you so much for watching part 6 of my Transamerica Trail Adventure Across America series. I made it to Colorado and couldn't be happier. Be sure to check out part 7 where the state pushes me to my absolute limit. 